Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. AMD's Financial Analyst Day has just taken place and the company have revealed tons of details for Zen 4, Zen 5, RDNA 3, RDNA 4 even, and a bunch of other very interesting products and architectures. And we're going to be going through all of that in this video. Plus also touching on some of the things that I've personally been hearing because it's quite interesting now that we're getting official word about some of this stuff, particularly when it comes to the performance per watts off for RDNA 3. We're going to discuss it right after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. The journey continues. That's what AMD are stating for RDNA 3. And we're going to get into specifics in just a moment. But just a quick reminder, RDNA 3 is going to launch later this year. And it's going to be part of the RX 7000 series. Now, to our current understanding anyway, it's going to be divided up into three distinct variants. It's going to be N31, 32, 33. With 33 being monolithic and 31 and 32, excuse me, being chiplet based. Based. Now let's actually look what AMD themselves have stated. It's got being created on a 5nm process with advanced chiplet packaging, re-architected compute unit, we'll get more into that in a moment, optimized graphics pipeline, and next generation AMD Infinity Cache. Perhaps the big interesting you know, number though that we all see is a 50% improvement in performance per watt. Now AMD have been chasing this figure you know, with just aggressiveness over the past several generations of their products. And obviously there's multiple benefits to this, not least of which their work for like games, consoles, but also APUs as well. Remember, RDNA is an architecture which of course does scale up to ultra powerful desktop GPUs, but naturally will be found in APUs like, well, Phoenix and the PlayStation 5 and so on and so on. So its flexibility and versatility are incredibly important. Now, getting back to that performance per watt figure, I find that quite interesting because to my personal understanding, at least for N33, the flagship um, N33 variants anyway, allegedly it's around 225 to 250 watts. And given the performance is roughly that of a 6900 XT, the performance per watt does kind of make sense although how this will exactly impact something like N31, we're not too sure. As for the re-architected compute unit, basically we think that essentially now um, the workgroup processor has been changed quite substantially. Basically, there's 256 shaders per workgroup processor rather than 128. And of course, we've discussed the specifications of RDNA 3 multiple times at this point. And I do believe that the specifications which are probably on screen about now do seem pretty accurate. Now, I will also add to this that I have heard that there is a dual GCD variant. Now, that was, of course, one of the older rumors that we heard. But it seems that the actual gaming variants, anyway, are a single uh, GCD. So the single GCD contains 12,000 shaders, but I am hearing that there may be duo versions of the card, and this would contain two, well, sorry, two GCDs. But I'm not quite sure of the packaging of this stuff yet, or the number of shaders. To my personal understanding thus far of the duo variants, first of all, they're only for prof you know professional use. Um, and the second point is that they're not up to 12,000 shaders. It's a lower number. I don't know exactly how many. I've heard like 8,000 and around 10,000. I'm honestly not sure at this point. I'm just throwing it out there because a couple of sources have told me that we are looking at duo variants, but I can't get an exact shader number, only that it's lower than the 12,000. But shifting our focus to the roadmap itself, um, yeah, RDNA, uh, RDNA 1, excuse me, was on the 7nm process, same thing for RDNA 2. 5nm for RDNA 3, although to my understanding, the chiplets, uh, the, 
the MCDs may be on a slightly different node, although of course that's not confirmed by AMD or at least in these roadmaps. And then an advanced node is going to be RDNA 4. This is probably going to be on the 3 or 4 NM process. I've personally heard both and we're going to get actually into the processes in just a moment. We're talking about uh, the Zen architectures because things get really interesting. I also briefly want to touch on CDNA3 and also CDNA4. So it is a very advanced... Uh, <laughs> I just... You know what? This thing is actually kind of bonkers. It pleases me. Um, AI performance. So five times increase in performance per watt uplift over CDNA2, which is actually... That's really good for the data center. I don't really need to say much more on that. Like It's pretty bloody obvious. 5 and n process and 3D chiplet packaging. Next generation AMD Infinity Cache, fourth generation Infinity Architecture, unified APU architecture, and um, also new math formats. They didn't specify what. And uh, yeah, CDNA3, of course, is going to launch you know, later, um, probably in 2023, at least according to what their roadmaps here. Um, I personally think that AMD are going to be just absolutely just demolishing the data center. Um, obviously, the fact of the matter is like actually getting data from the CPU to the GPU and having everything communicate harmoniously is a big thing. I'm kind of glazing over the data center CDNA stuff here because I don't know how much of my audience would be super interested in this. If you're like super keen, leave comments down below and I can go further into it. But yeah, this video is already going to get kind of long and... <laughs> maybe hard to follow um so yeah let's let's skip now to zen oh gosh darn there's a lot of stuff with zen and i am smiling because well there's just yeah there's a lot to go through um anyway um so starting things out zen 4 there's going to be zen 4 v cache and also zen 4c now notice they are produced on the 5 and 4 and then process so i'm going to talk more about processes in a moment but i just want to go over all this stuff really briefly and then in 2024 or by 2024 we're going to see zen 5 as well as zen 5 v cache and zen 5 c now if you've been watching the channel for any length of time you'll know that i've got a particular affinity towards zen 5 zen 4 is really cool but basically you know it's zen 3 but with major improvements essentially it's i don't like to use the term but my one of my sources literally called it fat zen 3 it basically takes everything zen 3 is good at makes changes cranks the um caches up adds a vx512 support and then it's like hey you know that clock frequency let's just dial that up to like 23 um, it just, it you know, it, it's an architecture which is designed around going really fast. Zen 5, though, I don't think there's a major improvement in the clock frequency. In fact, it could even regress a little, although I wouldn't really bank on that, given what AMD are doing with their architectures. Um, so I wouldn't really th think there's going to be a huge increase there. Hey, I'd love to eat my words. But the IPC gains are going to be pretty impressive, I've heard, with Zen 5. And this is not, of course, what's happened with Zen 4. We're going to get more into IPC stuff in just a moment. But for the Vcache, it's not too much of a surprise that we're going to see Vcache of variants for Zen 4 and Zen 5. I have, as a slight aside, also heard that there could, there could be Vcache variants um, for Zen 4 for the mobile solutions, although I don't have specifics as of right now. I'm going to do a bit more digging. Now, curiously, one of my sources just a short while ago before this event also told me that there will be 3D vCache variants for mobile. This is for Zen 4, just to be clear, for mobile as well as Threadripper. And this is the, you know, Zen 4 variants. Again, just to be really clear, Threadrippers apparently do have vCache variants. What I can't tell is whether it's like that for all of the Fred Ripper processors, or whether it's like you know the bleeding edge high end variants or something like the Pro uh, variants. Um, and I do believe that Fred Ripper Zen 4 goes up to 96 cores. Um, one source told me it was 64 cores, but I'm more inclined to believe that it's 96, which honestly is really impressive. It's it's going to be an awful lot of compute performance, and obviously for you know memory sensitive applications, you can imagine in a professional environment, artists that kind of thing, or if you're doing like data science, obviously the um, the Vcache uh, Zen 4 uh, thread rippers are going to be absolutely just ridiculous. Now, in terms of performance per watt gains, we need to talk about those for just a moment. We're looking at a 25% increase. Uh, this is measured in Cinebench, 
and this is with all threads running. This is with a 16 core 32 thread part. And this is with just over 35% increase, at least according to AMD, they're saying over 35% increase with Zen 4. They also provided a bit more clarification as to IPC. Significant generation performance per watt and frequency improvement, 8 to 10% instruction per clock increase, so that's IPC gains, 15% single thread performance gain, up to 125 up to 125% more additional memory bandwidth per core and ISA extensions for AI and also AVX 512. So yeah, around 8 to 10% IPC gains. Honestly, my sources recently, you know, if you watch my last video, had I've been told like it was like 12% possibly. So my other sources said 18, but I was getting very skeptical about that. To my understanding, possibly it could be up to 18% in AVX 512 workloads with tons of, you know, threads going on. Personally, I don't know, you know, I could imagine possibly in specific scenarios that could be maybe true, but 8 to 10%, um, if you actually look at the footnotes of what they've been testing here, it is uh, running on, I believe it was SpecView Perf, and they were testing it on a couple of different workloads, so again, that does make sense, uh, Zen, uh, Zen 4 basically is just orientated on clock frequency they didn't want to add a ton of additional logic to the core one source actually did tell me that uh, during like the very early stages of design amd did have a choice they were kind of mulling over two different approaches the first was to keep clock frequencies kind of not stagnant but not go too high like you know how we saw like zen 1 to zen 2 or zen 2 to zen 3 that kind of improvement or uh, sorry, and also increase uh, IPC more significantly, or they could have just cranked the clocks up and obviously make the other changes that we've discussed. And obviously this is the approach they've done, and I think it's probably a more logical idea because Zen 5 is such a big redesign. It would be kind of bonkers for them to do all of that work, and then I'm assuming there's going to be an awful lot of changes for Zen 5. Possibly also... Some things, and this is speculation on my part, this is not based upon what I've been told, I want to be abundantly clear, but possibly some things just got delayed and held back for perhaps another generation, whatever reason, and as always with this stuff, it's very hard to exactly know what goes on, you know, things can be started and then they're like, yeah, that's not going to be ready for this generation of products, let's hold it back for that generation of products, some rumours can simply be wrong. So, yeah, I'm actually seeing some people being disappointed with Zen 4, like we've not really seen it enough yet to judge it. Um, at the end of the day, I do think that Raptor Lake is going to be a really good architecture. Um, I suspect Raptor Lake is probably going to have the advantage in multi-thread, and Zen 4 is probably going to have the advantage in single-thread, but... Honestly, at this stage, we won't really know that. That you know, We won't know for certain until we actually start to see benchmarks closer to the release. But I think both Intel and AMD have done pretty good jobs for their upcoming architectures. Intel are in a much better place, let's just be honest, compared to what they were with like their 10th and especially, particularly their 11th generation products. Like I felt kind of bad, actually, for the, the marketing department of the 11th generation. It's just like they don't really have that much to work with but obviously with older lake and raptor lake and 14th generation and onwards they start to do much better so i do think that intel and amd are going to be really just just super aggressive with one another and obviously that works out excellently for us as end users now the final thing i would like to discuss in this video are the apus because the apus in my opinion are going to be extremely important for amd's strategy going forward particularly in notebooks and laptops and perhaps the one that's most interesting to me anyway are their phoenix apus which i've discussed and linked quite significantly over the past while but you can see yourself performance leadership phoenix point 4nm it's based on zen 4 rdna 3 and has aie so aie is rdna artificial intelligence engine um i'm still trying to find out a little bit more about that i'm assuming it's going to be uh based upon some of the acquisitions of the linux obviously that's a key um that's a key acquisition for amd and we've already started to see hints in this particular event of what amd are going to be doing with their particular tech um it's perhaps one I mean, I'm not saying that the purchase was cheap, you know, they didn't buy it with the, the, the change they found on the couch cushions, but 
you kind of feel like the money that AMD spent on Linux is possibly one of the best deals in the industry. That's my personal opinion. Feel free to disagree down below. Um, but yeah, Phoenix is going to be absolutely just ridiculous, and AMD's APUs as a you know as a as a as a rule. I'm also trying to learn a little bit more about RDNA 3 Plus. To my understanding, so far it's built on a, an improved process and has some energy efficiency improvements. But I don't know if there's any architectural stuff. So I'm trying to do a little bit more digging. And I think that's just about it for this video. I was going to actually talk about some exclusive information for Zen 5. I've actually already put out Zen 5 info a while ago, but I've actually got some updates to that. Um, a little bit of preliminary Zen 6 stuff. But as I said, this video is already getting really long at this point. I've finally finished the PlayStation 5 Pro video. Uh, basically, the editing's just occurring. So, um, yeah, what day is it today? Uh, Friday. So, yeah, my brain's gone blank. Uh, so, it should be up either Saturday or Sunday, depending on what's going on. Um, and that I'm actually pretty happy with now. I, as I said, I had to redo the PS5 Pro video um, like a couple of times. I kept on getting new little tip bits. Um, further to that, I've got some other information for the PlayStation Portable. So it's kind of an update. I was originally going to combine them into the same video. Um, so it'd be like the PS5 Pro and the handheld. But I basically got some more info um, for that and also some stuff with Valve. Um, some really early info, so I kind of decided to separate things a little bit because otherwise the topic just gets really messy and yeah, um, I, 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 I think like points start to get lost if a video gets like really long and I'm talking about multiple different things. Speaking of which, I think this is a good place to call this video. If you've enjoyed it, it's YouTube. Um, yeah, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, if you do want to purchase a Windows uh, CD key, obviously with Zen 4 coming out, um, RDNA 3, uh, RTX 40, and all of the other stuff, you know, now's a good time, of course. And you, know, you could get yourself a cheap one by clicking down below. And it does help support the channel, guys. Thanks again. Take care of yourself. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.